Welcome to Illness Scripts Pencast. This channel is designed to improve diagnostic abilities of all medical professionals, but is geared towards physicians and physicians in training. What is an illness script? Illness scripts are a combination of predisposing factors, history clues, exam findings, labs, and imaging that can serve as a fingerprint for a specific diagnosis. Illness scripts are one of many cognitive tools that master clinicians use subconsciously to arrive at a diagnosis in an accurate yet efficient manner. As a veteran of all USMLE STEP and other board exams, I can assure you that illness scripts are an incredibly useful tool for succeeding on these tests. Even if the question does not directly ask you to diagnose the patient, it will often assume you have already done so quickly in time to answer the real question. Illness scripts are especially accurate on board exams because, with very few exceptions, they are obligated to give you a more or less classic presentation of a disease process. For each video, I will break down a diagnosis into its key components, as well as highlighting key points that differentiate this diagnosis from others that may be on your differential for the patient's chief complaint. Understanding why diagnoses are excluded is equally important to your success. Let's use hemophilia A as an example. Predisposing factors would include genetics, as this is an X-linked recessive inherited disorder. As such, you would expect a male patient with possible mention of a family history of maternal family members with the bleeding disorder. History could possibly include excessive bleeding following minor procedures, especially look for dental procedures on the exams. Or you may find that they present with hemarthroses. Exam findings would include the same possible hemarthroses, but may and often is quite unremarkable. Lab findings would include normal INR, normal bleeding time, and prolonged PTT, with factor 8 level, of course, being markedly decreased. Other diagnoses to consider in this differential, however, would be hemophilia B, which is a factor 9 deficiency, and von Willebrand's disease, which we will get to later. In real life, we rarely, if ever, check bleeding times. However, the board exam will often provide you with this information. The bleeding time in hemophilia is normal, because although the clotting cascade is affected, the platelet aggregation, which is the determinant of bleeding time, is preserved. Now let's compare this to von Willebrand's disease, where the PTT will be prolonged, but so too is the bleeding time, because in this disorder, both the coagulation cascade and platelet aggregation are affected. Also, clinically, these disorders are quite different. Von Willebrand's disease is inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion, with the exception of the acquired forms, which you may see, for example, in someone with critical aortic stenosis that is shearing off von Willebrand multimers and creating a functional von Willebrand's disease. Thus, if a female patient has a bleeding disorder, it's more likely von Willebrand's disease. Von Willebrand's disease is also much more common in general than hemophilia. Lastly, the bleeding manifestations are quite different. Major bleeds, such as the disfiguring hemarthroses that we've already discussed, are more characteristic of hemophilia, with the milder mucosal bleeding being seen in von Willebrand's disease. At the end of each video, 
I will summarize the findings into a typical case presentation, and these will serve as your illness script for that disease. For hemophilia A, for example, our script would read, a 16-year-old man with a history of a bleeding disorder in males on the mother's side with excessive bleeding following a simple dental procedure with findings of hemarthrosis of the left knee on exam. Lab findings include normal INR, normal bleeding time, prolonged PTT, and a markedly decreased factor VIII activity. In real life and on the board exams, you will not have this entire description. However, you will have enough of this description to be able to differentiate it from other key diseases on your differential, and that's all that you need, both on the board exams and in real life. That is what my hope is with this channel. I hope to give you the tools that you need to build your illness scripts so that you can pick the correct answer on the exam, that you can diagnose your patients correctly. I encourage you to submit comments on how to improve my channel as I am doing this for your education. Please also submit comments about future topics you would like me to cover. If you find my videos useful, please subscribe and remember to like the video. Until next time.